Hello, hello. So it's Labor Day right now, public holiday, and I thought, you know, I'd take the opportunity to come out here and to uh, the uh, Richmond line, actually. So pretty spontaneous decision to come out here today. Uh, you know, I just uploaded my, uh, what video was it? The Red Rooster line video yesterday. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to edit this. Probably gonna be watching this one or two weeks later. So mid-October maybe, but yeah. Um, so right now I'm at Schofields. Schofields is a suburb on the fringe of Sydney's urban sprawl, as Wiki puts it. Huh, that's not very flattering. Anyways, the suburb has had a railway station as part of the Richmond Line ever since 1870. The suburb and the station were named after a former convict, John Schofield, who opened a sawmill beside the railway. But here's the thing, Schofield's railway station is one of the only railway stations in Sydney to have completely moved in recent years. So right now I'm at the former location of Schofield's railway station. So Schofield's railway station used to be located here, uh, very close to the whole Schofield's town centre. They then moved it 800 metres south and they've replaced the former station, which is of course here, with a nice pedestrian bridge. So, you know, uh, obviously, as you can imagine, it was quite a controversial decision to move the station, but the government ended up winning and they moved the station a bit further south because the location further south has more land, more potential for station development. The old station here at the original Schofield site used to have a single island platform. Uh, there's not really any signs of it anymore, no signs of the platform. There was also a pedestrian level crossing here, again, no signs remain of that. Okay, if you enjoyed that little snippet, stick around. In this video, I'm going to be touring the Richmond Line from Schofields to Richmond. This is a line that runs through one of the least developed parts of Sydney. Inspired by a little known British YouTuber called, uh, Geoff Marshall? Hmm. I'll be exploring secrets of every station along the line, and believe me, there are many. The Richmond Line has the greatest concentration of level crossings anywhere in Sydney. Of the nine level crossings that remain in Sydney, seven of them are on the Richmond Line. Isn't that crazy? And on top of that, many of the stations have next to nothing near them. For those reasons and more, the Richmond Line has to be one of my favourite Sydney lines. I'm Sharad, and welcome to Building Beautifully. Before I continue, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And do be sure to check out the rest of my channel, your go-to YouTube destination for all things city planning, after the video. So I'm now at the uh, new Schofield station, which was moved here in October 2011, 800 metres from the old station. And this station is now quite important because of its proximity to new developments in places like Schofield and Marston Park. The station building has a very distinct maroon red appearance, like a tin roof, reflecting the European heritage of the area. Now, as I said, they moved the station further south to allow for more developments to occur around the station, and this is exactly what is happening. Many homes are being built around the station, and a shopping precinct has formed outside the station. I do think it's rather peculiar the government decided to move Schofield Station, but it seems to be going well. There's a lot of effective development happening around the station. The station is in a single island platform format, and its concourse is quite spacious. Now, the Sydney Metro Northwest currently ends at Talawong, around about 3km east of Schofields. Naturally, many have questioned why exactly the Metro wasn't extended to Schofields to begin with. Well, regardless of the reason, the Sydney Metro is planned to be extended to Schofield one day, and then all the way south to St Mary's, where it will link up with the currently under construction Sydney Metro Western Sydney Airport. Anyways, so up to Schofields the line is duplicated, it's two, two tracks, but then after Schofields it becomes one track, single track all the way to Richmond. Alright, let's pause for a moment and go over a bit of history for the Richmond line. The line opened in 1864, extending from Blacktown to Richmond, with stations at Quakers Hill and Maryong, sorry, won't be exploring those in this video, as well as Schofields, Riverston, Vineyard, Mulgrave, Windsor, Clarendon, East Richmond, and Richmond. There were, however, only four original stations in 1864, Riverston, Mulgrave, Windsor, and Richmond. 
The line is currently part of two train routes, the T1 North Shore and Western Line and the T5 Cumberland Line. These two lines both go all the way to Schofields, but T1 only goes all the way to Richmond during the day. T5 on the other hand only goes all the way to Richmond at night, from 11pm to 6am. How strange. Now you surely notice that the area around Schofield is quite developed. Don't get used to that. There is one tragic thing keeping land around most of the Richmond line from being developed, and we will get to that soon. Alright, let's head to our next stop, Riverston. So I'm not usually very vloggy in these videos, I tend to just be factual, but you know what, let's be a bit unscripted. Uh, my girlfriend's gone out with her sister today um, to go climbing, some sort of treetops adventure type of like high ropes thing. Usually, you know, we hang out a lot. Uh, usually, I'd be quite even spending the public holiday with her, but you know, she's hanging with her her sister. I have friends with my plans later. I have friends with my plans. I have plans with my friends later. Uh, and that's up to six, so you know, just thought I'd spend the day. It's such a beautiful day too, if you look at the weather. Anyways, here we are now. We are now at Riverston. Alright, so here I am now at Riverston Railway Station. It opened in 1864, so one of the original stations, and it has a heritage listed building right behind me, which was designed by William Weaver. The original wooden station building lasted until 1886, and the new brick station building, that one, was built in 1889, and it survives to this day, which I think is, you know, that's pretty cool, right? Just, you know, a nice little remnant of the past. You know, we have all these new station buildings like, like the Schofield one. Uh, it's nice to have old station buildings like this one. This station used to be the terminus of electrification from 1975 to 1991. So this is where it used to end. You would have to change to get onto a shuttle train to continue to Richmond. They did in 1991 electrify all the way to Richmond, which is of course good. So as you can see, the Riverston station has two platforms in a side platform arrangement. So, you know, you have to swap platforms if you want to go in a different direction, basically. So just behind me, you can see the one of the old good sidings, which are apparently rarely used. Honestly, looking at it, I'm going to guess it's never used, to be honest with you. There used to be more good sidings here, but, you know, that's the only one that actually remains to this day. I mentioned earlier that the Richmond line has a lot of level crossings. The first level crossing can be found right next to Riverston Station at Garfields Road West. There's also an unofficial level crossing just to the north of the station into an industrial yard. Back to the Garfield Road's West level crossing, unfortunately with new developments in the Riverston area, the level crossing can now become quite congested during the day. After all, the suburb of Riverston, like nearby Schofields, is decently built up and it's growing, with a population of 8,000 people at the 2021 census. But, well, let's just say that the next station on our journey is definitely not growing. It's time for Vineyard. Making this channel has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's been really cool, like, I think at the start of the year I had like, 200 subscribers, and the channel's just grown and grown this year, and I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, and it's been kind of cool being recognized uh, on the street. I've been recognized a few times now. If you recognize me on the street, feel free to come up to me, happy to have a chat. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just very nice to know that people are really enjoying my channel and enjoying it enough to actually recognize me on the street. Alright, so I am now at Vineyard, which is the next station after Riverston. This station opened in 1935, so you know, a late addition to the line. And it's a very, very bare bones station. There's no station building, there's no ticket machine, there's nothing really, no bathrooms. And you might be wondering why is that the case? Well, guess what? Vineyard was the least used station in all of Sydney in May 2022. So, why is the station so underused? Well, let's go and have a look at what's around the station. Guess how far away I am from Vineyard Station right now. It's right there. There's literally nothing next to this station. Nothing. The suburb of Vineyard only has 1,143 people, and that's down from 2011. 
so it's not a surprise that there's next to nothing near the station, other than an industrial yard. Look at how empty this station map is. Because of this, the station only has one platform, and it doesn't even have a building. It just has a small station canopy. This is the second level crossing on the Richmond Line north of uh, Schofield Station. This is Bandon Road, and obviously as you can kind of tell, it's a much quieter level crossing than the Garfield Road West level crossing that I was just at. La -de -da. My name is Jeff Marshall, uh, and I make videos on the London Underground. The uniquely named Level Crossing Road is located about a kilometre north of the station. It's the third official level crossing on the line. Back in 1994, there was a derailment at this station at the level crossing when a train collided with a Toyota Tarago. Fortunately, no one was killed. Unfortunately, nothing has happened at this station for 30 years since. I've been kind of keeping this on the down low, but I'm actually the new voice for Sydney Trains. I got the idea from this pretty small YouTuber. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. His name is Jeff Marshall. Anyways, any minute now, we'll hear my voice over the speakers. I'm so excited, man. That's me. That's my voice. First stop, Mulgrave, and then... It sounded a bit more station. feminine than usual, though. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. Why is there a railway station within the suburban limits of Sydney that has absolutely nothing next to it? Well, Vineyard, along with the Greater Hawkesbury area located around the Richmond Line, is unfortunately located on a notorious floodplain. The area floods tragically easily after heavy rain, and especially after a year like 2022, Sydney's wettest year on record. There's next to no chance of any development happening at Vineyard in the near future. The station's surrounds will probably remain this empty for many years to come. Alright, time to get back on that train and head to Mulgrave. Alright, so I've made it now to Mulgrave Station, which is the next station after Vineyard. This station is not quite as quiet as Vineyard, but it's still very quiet. It was the fifth least used station in May 2022. It's one of the four original stations on the Richmond Line. It used to be located a bit further west, but you know, they brought it here in 1912. The station used to have a side platform format, however it was converted to an island platform in 1939. Also, there used to be a good signing at the station, but this is long gone now. The station does have more surrounds than the vineyard. Uh, you know, you can see some houses back there and there's some warehouses over in that direction. But other than that, you know, it's nothing really special. So right behind me, we have the fourth level crossing of the Richmond line north of Schofields, which is, of course, Mulgrave Road. And it's just west of the station. My name's Jeff Marshall, my name's Jeff Marshall, my name's Jeff Marshall, my name's Jeff Marshall, my Marshall, my name's Jeff 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 Marshall. The line then crosses over South Creek a bit west of the station. The fifth level crossing is halfway between Mulgrave and the next station, Windsor, Ferry Road. It's pretty quiet here right now, uh, and that's not exactly surprising because Mulgrave only has a population of 78, which is even lower than Vineyard. The Hawkesbury Valley way, you can just see it, its bridge over in the distance. A lot of this area lies on a floodplain and it floods very regularly. Uh, the Hawkesbury Valley way is the main flood evacuation route when it does flood. On my, on my train ride from Vineyard to Mulgrave, I was actually recognized by a fan. It's funny because I was just saying that, you know, if you recognize me, feel free to uh, say hi. And you know, this person said hi, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you know, if you're watching right now hi again <laughs> i'm sure you know who you are now one last notable thing about mulgrave is that the station was actually in a music video by the australian band the seekers called angeline is always friday released in 1967 now my original plan was to let you listen to just the song here for a bit but then youtube copyright claimed me I think if I talk over it, YouTube should allow it, so if you're hearing this right now, I guess it worked. This song really is quite a beautiful song, and honestly I feel like it really suits Margrave Station very well. There's something so indescribable about stations like Mulgrave. They're so quiet, so serene, so picturesque. The surroundings are so undeveloped. Honestly, they haven't changed that much since this music video. It's honestly so paradoxical, because this station is in Sydney, it's officially in Sydney, and yet it's completely undeveloped land, and I just 
love how paradoxical that is. How you can have busy stations like Chatswood, like Epping, in the same city as such quiet stations like Mulgrave. Isn't that cool? Alright, enough nostalgia. Bring the beat back, it's time for Windsor. So people who live in Sydney may know that Windsor appears on a lot of road signs in Sydney. Many, many road signs such as Victoria Road, Windsor Road obviously, even motorways like the M4 and the M2 tend to use Windsor Road as one of their main focal points. And I've always found that kind of interesting because Windsor is actually a pretty small town and only about a thousand people living there. It's probably the most disproportionate focal point in Sydney. Today I'm headed to go and see some friends. Uh, we're, we're catching up with Kate barbecue, which I'm pretty excited for honestly. I had to skip lunch, so I hopefully I'm absolutely starving because it's a buffet. So, yeah, alright, we're at Windsor. So, I'm currently at Windsor Railway Station, which was the 15th least used station in May 2022. Now, the station building is right behind me, and it is beautiful. It is a heritage listed station, and it's one of the only remaining stations of this form, which I think is just simply beautiful, honestly. Uh, so, basically, the brick building dates from 1884, and it's, you can tell, it's in very good condition. The building is a fine example of Victorian second-class architecture. It has a hipped roof with a valley slate roof extending outwards, two chimneys, a veranda along the street side of the building, eaves hanging off the roof, corrugated iron columns, and more. It's easy to see why it's a landmark within Windsor. After all, they really did build this beautifully. Get it? Because. I'm building beautifully, I'm, I'm sure you get it. As you can see, Windsor Railway Station is in a single side platform arrangement. Now, Windsor Station has two of the only grade separated crossings north of Schofield, but just south of the station. The first one is a bridge over the A9 Macquarie Street, the second is over George Street. However, the station does still have a level crossing of sorts. Now right here is a level crossing uh, Cox Street. Now interestingly, it's just for pedestrians. The road is only allowed to be used for emergency use. Only pedestrians can actually cross here for whatever reason, so yeah. And I am Jeff Marshall. Now just north of Windsor Station, there is a massive bridge over Rickaby's Creek. It used to be a timber wooden bridge. However, it was replaced by a steel girder bridge in the late 80s. Now there actually used to be a railway goods yard located right here. It was here all the way until around about 2008, you can see it on Street View, but it was fully overgrown because even though it was here for that long, they hadn't used it since the 1800s. They just left it here and they let it get overgrown, there were some cranes that were left here uh, and it was a whole thing. Uh, unfortunately they did get rid of it, as you can see there's now a car park here. However, they did leave this crane right in the background over there, which, you know, that's pretty cool of them. You know what album I'm listening to a lot lately? The new 5 Seconds of Summer album. You guys should check it out, it's honestly really good. Alright, here I am now at Clarendon Railway Station. This station opened in 1870 and it was the 8th least used station in May 2022. I'm sure well and truly by now you're getting the sense that the Richmond Line has a lot of underused stations. The station has two platforms in a side platform arrangement, so somewhat like Riverston. Uh, actually, no, exactly like Riverston. <laughs> Probably one of the most special things about Clarendon Station is that it's so close to the Richmond RAAF base airport. It's the closest station to the airport. However, this airport isn't actually a passenger airport, so it's not that big a deal that it's close to it. <laughs> the suburb only had 147 residents in 2021, so there's not exactly any surprises that the station is barely used. Well, at least it has a tavern and a few other restaurants and stuff nearby. The 6th level crossing, Racecourse Road, is just west of the station. My name is Jeff Marshall, thank you so much Building Beautifully for shouting me out on your channel. 
ever since he shouted me out, I have had a sudden growth in my channel. I have like 400,000 subscribers and I owe it all to you. I copied my entire formula from this one video you made. My entire formula is all based on what you do. I'm so grateful, Building Beautifully. Thank you so much, Building Beautifully. My name is Jeff Marshall, by the way. Thank you so much. I'm Jeff Marshall. Jeff Marshall. Speaking of Racecourse Road, just off the road is this sign which points to the road as going to the M7 and the M2. I found this really funny because the M7 is a good 15 kilometers away from Clarendon and the M2 is a good 30 kilometers away. Very weird signage, honestly. One last thing, Clarendon Station appears to be currently undergoing an upgrade, although it appears to be mostly small things like adding a few new accessible parking spaces. All right, time to leave Clarendon and head to East Richmond. I then realised the train was still too far away, so I thought I'd just say it again and edit it out later. But instead, I'm just going to show you both. Alright, time to leave Clarendon and head to East Richmond. Alright, so I'm now at East Richmond Station. This station opened in 1939 to provide access to the Hawkesbury Agricultural College, as well as East Richmond in general. In May 2022, it was the second least used station on the Sydney network, just behind Vineyard. The seventh and final level crossing is located right there at Burke Street, just west of the station. Obviously, the station is very small. It exists in a single side platform format, pretty similar to Vineyard. The original station buildings are no longer in existence. The station does have this modern looking building though. That's something at least. Now, one of the smallest gaps between two stations in Sydney is between East Richmond and Richmond Station. This station is only 700 metres from Richmond. Honestly, I've never really understood the point of East Richmond Station, given it's the second least used station and it's so close to Richmond Station. In fact, I'm planning to just walk there to get to Richmond Station instead of waiting for the train for half an hour. Honestly, I suppose the only really remarkable thing about East Richmond is that there is a station in Melbourne with the exact same name that is far more remarkable, honestly, because it's near the CBD. Stupid Melbourne. All right, time to head to Richmond Station, the final stop on the Richmond line. Boy, I'm starting to get hunger. Can't wait for that K-barbecue. So, the Richmond line didn't actually always end at Richmond. The line was actually extended north to Kurrajong in 1926, going across Richmond, Richmond Park to Kurrajong, and it had six additional stations between Richmond and Kurrajong. The line closed in 1952 after a landslide near Kurrajong due to heavy rain, and they just never bothered to reopen the line. The line was pretty underused, so, the damage due to the rain, it was really just not worth them spending money to rebuild the line when they could just close it. I mean, no one is really using it anyway. They were probably happy, they were probably relieved that they had a reason to get rid of the line. It was probably a bit of a burden for them to manage anyways. I might explore the Courage Line one day, but there's very little that actually remains of it now. I've been to Richmond a few times, and honestly, I think it's a very beautiful suburb. It's one of Sydney's oldest towns, established in 1811, although it is a good 63 kilometers northwest of Sydney. It's actually the furthest suburb from Sydney that's still on the Sydney train network. It's got some very beautiful buildings, a nice park in the town centre, which you saw earlier, and amazing views of the Blue Mountains. Indeed, it's actually situated on the B59, one of the back roads that takes you west to the Blue Mountains and beyond. All right, let's head to the last station on our journey, Richmond Station. Bring it on. All right, we finally made it to the end of the line. This is Richmond, the final station on the Richmond line. It was one of the four original stations opened in 1864. The station was the 17th least used station in May 2022, so not as bad as the other stations. The station has two platforms and an island arrangement, which is a little bit unusual. It's at the end of the line, so trains can only go in one direction, but <laughs> that's just how it is. The brick station building dates back from 1881, before the Windsor building, although both buildings are almost identical. The station building is beautiful, just like Windsor. Corrugated iron veranda roof, beautiful chimneys, hipped roof and more. It's just such a beautiful building. I love these heritage buildings. I wish more stations had them. They're just beautiful. But I guess part of what makes them so special is that so few stations have them. 
Now there was actually a serious accident here in 2018 at the station where one of the trains overran the platform with 16 seriously injured. Just north of platform 1, there's a siding. Now remember the Karajong line I mentioned earlier? This siding used to join up with that line. Oh, and finally, Richmond Station, just like Windsor, used to have a goods yard, but similar to Windsor, it's now been replaced with a car park. Phew, we're done. Boy, that was my longest video ever. Alright, so I've just gotten on the train that's headed back to Schofield where I parked my car. That's the video done. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. It was more vloggy than usual, but I really enjoyed uh, making it. And I've had a lot of fun today going and visiting some stations that I've never been to. Uh, and now I'm going to go and have a massive dinner because I still haven't had lunch. I'm going to go have a massive dinner, a wonderful gay barbecue with my friends. And let's hope that goes well. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and do be sure to check out the rest of my channel if you'd like. I would really, really appreciate it. And last of all, most importantly, please remember to go and support my good friend, Jack Marshall. He's really struggling, he's really down on the rocks right now. You really should subscribe to him, so, you know. Thank you.